Good morning, everybody. We'd like to welcome you to our webinar, Curious About Sage and Tack Construction. Uh, my name is Troy Guevara, and uh, Tina, former 300 Power user turned Intac user. Let's go ahead and get started. Before I dive into the actual product, I want to just talk a little bit about where Intac has come from, where it's been. So, as many of you know, if, you were, if you're a Sage 300 user, you're a Timberline user, that product has been around for 50 plus years. Intac, believe it or not, um, its original original cloud product came around a little over 20 years ago, um, but it didn't have any construction functionality. And of course, Sage continued to grow out their construction CRE market with Sage 100. They bought Timberline. Of course, Digitech Solutions opened in 2005. That's where I am. And then Sage Intact Construction was born in 2020. Sage purchased Intact a couple years prior to that because they knew where they were going to move Timberline. Rather than go rebuild all of Timberline, they said, let's take the, the skills of what intact can do and we'll add construction to it and that has been very beneficial um, to sage and it's been very beneficial to our new customers that are now on sage intact construction sage as many of you know is kind of the 800 pound gorilla in the construction software space and that's evident now um, especially with sage intact so what we're seeing is it's a complete construction software the best part about it is, as, as many of you know, no software does everything, but when it comes to having a solid ERP, Sage Intech does that. But we can add on the other things you need, ancillary products. If you're a service company, we can add on the service side. If you have estimating, we can add on the estimating. Um, if you're HR, we can add on the HR. And for operations, we can add on, you know, something like Procore or Corecon if you're looking for some sort of really advantageous um, operational software. So very powerful software. And so what you'll see here is a, a little better explanation of, of that. So you can see that we can take you through the entire construction life cycle, including post-construction for service companies that continue to service, you know, whether an MEP contractor, commercial, residential, whatever, this product does it all. And then of course, our latest rendition of an operational software is CoreCon put into the Sage hemisphere and Sage is now selling CoreCon. It is now a Sage product and they're integrating that with Sage and TAC. So a couple of things I just wanna share with you. This is what we're gonna go through today. We're gonna to talk about dimensions, multi-entity capabilities. Um, we're gonna talk about the dashboards and reporting with the drill down capabilities in Sage and TAC. And of course the smart roles and the smart events. Um, one of the most powerful features of Sage is there really is unlimited customization. So. A lot of softwares have parameters. You can do this, you can't do that. Sage, what we've found so far is very customizable. And so no two renditions are ever the same. Even from one general contractor to another, you will see a completely different setup because of the needs of what companies do. And then of course the bank feeds, um, which we hope any uh, construction software will have, the benefit of the bank feeds and with all the other things that Sage Intact does, we're seeing companies that had a, a previous 10 day month close, bring that down to five days because so much of that work is done during the actual, as the month goes on, a lot of the, those close processes are eliminated. So that is the case. So at this time, uh, Tina's here. I'm gonna share, I'm gonna have Tina share her screen. All right, so again, going back to dimensions and multi-entities, uh, we'll go ahead and just touch base on each one of these that Troy was looking at, uh, was talking about just a moment ago. Uh, one thing that is a very big advantage with Sage and Tech is being able to consolidate your financials, uh, having multi-entities, uh, different EIN numbers, and being able to have each EIN be able to, or company, be able to put their own information in at the entity level. And then as a controller or CFO, uh, shareholder, you're able to pull that information from your top level. You can combine um, or extract just what you want to see at the top level. Uh, but as you can see here in our demonstration, we have a uh, entity for general con uh, construction, we have an entity for a development, and we have an entity for our subcontracting. Um, being able to flip in between is just, a be, uh, just as easy as toggling. Um, and that is, you know, the multi-entity kind of in a nutshell, uh, being able to control what is being put into each entity and, um, 
being able to still pull it at the top level into your reports. Uh, another piece of this that we have is dimensions. Dimensions, again, very powerful um, piece of Sage Intact. Uh, I just wanna show you real quick um, the dimensions that we have available. And see here, we'll go to reports and set up. And as you can see here, these are all customizable. We can, we can change the naming on these. Um, and you can see that you can sort by class, you can you know, code stuff by uh, cost types. When you're in construction, you have a lot of cost types and cost codes uh, by jobs, locations. We have several different ones. We even have them down to warehouse when you're using inventory, um, being able to sort by bin and that type of um, information. Uh, all of the dimensions, you know, we've got, we show 11 of them here, but there are, you know, available to have more. Um, then, then we go into uh, our dashboards. This part of it, the multi-entity and your dimensions is how the, the data is coded. When we get into our dashboards, then we're able to see how that feeds into our different types of um, KPIs that we actually want to look at. I'm going to go ahead and pull it at the top level so that we can see the multi dimensions that we have here. Let me go ahead and close that screen there so that's not in front. Um, as you can see here, this is the, the dashboards are all 100% customizable. I have a couple that I have in here that are um, for operations types, but we also have dashboards that you can create for certain users. Let's say a CFO or a payable manager. Both look at KPIs differently or look at data differently. Um, so once we get in here, you can go in and let's say we want to filter by a job or we want to filter by a location. Maybe we only want to see what is in our construction entity. All we can do, we could do it right here at the top. That leaves all of the reports and everything there for you. And you can click reply and you'll see that it will actually change to just the construction um, entity information. Here we go. So you see that the difference here, we had you know several reports in there, but some of those were the development company um, and once we filter, it actually brings you into your dashboards here. One more thing that I'd like to point out on these dashboards, if you can see here, anything that is highlighted in blue, um, you can actually drill into. So if we wanted to see the actual cost on a certain job, uh, the custom, being able to drill down into the entity itself, um, right straight down into the report, so it takes you to the general ledger report. That's the cost. This would be your expenses on this particular job. And being able to drill even further into it and seeing the actual invoice. It takes you right to the expense itself so that you can go ahead and anything that's in blue will go ahead and let you drill into depending on where you are in the report. But drill down reporting and drill down in this is very robust, very um, easy to be able to get down to the data. We went from our KPI to our general ledger, right straight down to our the GL transaction so we could see how that uh, expense actually was coded. Um, and then even being able to go even further into it and going to the job itself. So the job itself, you know, you have additional information on here, being able to have it all in one place. It tells you, you know, the detail that you get at the job level um, on the job. So being able to drill in is huge, and that's from any report in the system that we have, um, you're able to drill down. As you can see, I will go ahead and just be done, go back out, click done, we'll go ahead and click our X here, takes us back to our KPI. At any time, I can switch back and forth. We have the same dashboards at the entity level as well, and you can still be able to go in. But of course, these dashboards are gonna be a little bit different because we are going to look at them from the entity level rather than the top level, which is your consolidated level. So we go into an AP manager's role-based 
dashboard here and you can see what is important to an AP manager. Maybe the AP bill register we want to see. You know, we want to see what the AP invoices are costed against what job. Now these jobs here are all jobs that are for this entity only. So it's, you're not seeing all the different jobs like you did on the first tab, which is your top level. And the reason why is because this is specific to the entity. Um, we could go ahead and we could bring up our subcontracting tab and that's the same as here. You would only see what is actually coded and um, at that entity level. Uh, smart rules, smart events. Another huge uh, advantage of Sage Intech. We can go into uh, the smart rules events and clicks, custom fields and custom views, and be able to customize what your system does based on your workflows. So let's say that we are in an AP invoice and we want certain fields to be populated before we get out of that invoice or before we get out of the AP bill. We can set a smart rule here that says you cannot save without being able to do something. Here's our AP bill and we just go through and we're able to put a customization on it and says anytime anyone adds or sets any parameters, we want an error message to come up and it will actually kick out an error message and not allow the, the end user to save that bill without the detail that we say we want to see in that bill. Um, smart event is another one that is huge for the company or for the Sage in tech. Events would be um, where you would be able to go in and say an API or an email sends out. If we have someone that creates a new user, for instance, you could say, I want to see an email populated every time a new user account is um, adjusted. It asks you what type of event do you want to happen to trigger when something happens. Like I said, email, API, we actually have it do something in the system. So if let's say if we, going back to an AP bill, if an AP bill is put into the system and we are able to um, create an API, let's say we put the job number in the top portion of it, then that job number will automatically filter into your detail below. We're able to say, we're able to create an event, a smart event in the system that actually does that for you. So it streamlines your workflows. It helps put those controls in place so that we're not getting junk in, junk out when we're looking at our KPIs, looking at those dashboards, looking at those reports. We're not getting the junk that, you know, something got missed in the, that AP expense. It actually has everything that I want it to have in there because I've got these smart rules set up that will error out if it isn't there. And I have a smart event that actually populates something and also sends out an email. We can set those up. It sends out an email when this something, a criteria happens in the system. Um, going back to the all, you know, unlimited customization, as Troy had touched on, I just, I have not seen a client that has been implemented that they have asked us to customize something that we haven't been able to do. That's, to me, that's amazing. I've worked in, um, I would say probably 30 different accounting systems through my career. And with Sage Intech, the customization is just astounding. I mean, it's just crazy on some of the stuff it does make it difficult at times to be able to go in, jump into a system and be able to know what types of troubleshooting to do because it is 100% customizable. For instance, when I go into um, just the terminology, some, you know, we, we can customize what certain things say in the system throughout the entire system. So let's say that uh, I'll have an example here, this project. We have clients that say, yeah, we don't call it project, we call it job. 
So if you go in and you look, we've actually customized this terminology rather than to have it say projects, it's gonna say job. That doesn't just say it in the applications that you go in and put your entry in, it actually changes it in the menus. It changes it throughout the entire system. Um, anywhere that you would have seen project, it's gonna change it to jobs. Um, so it, not just jobs, but you see here, even job contract, anywhere that it said project, it's gonna change it, job, change orders. You're able to customize it to your terminology, your workflows, um, and then all of that feeds back into your top level where you can, you can pull those reports for your shareholders, for your, your owners, um, being able to just do those measures for your operations and being able to see everything on the day that it happens. Um, I just think that that's a key piece of when, it, when you go in and you're able to see it on a daily basis, you're able to catch things faster. You're able to, you know, uh, maybe there's uh, expenses that come in on a job. We could set rules that say you can't go over a certain budget. These budgets go into the system and it will actually alert you if you're going to go over a budget item. Um, we're able to set that up and it even can email out to different people. Uh, customizations. Let me show you one other thing I, I think is great with um, these customizations. We're going to go into, let me see, we'll do vendors. So we've got vendors here and you can see that you have relationships as well. You can have parent-child relationships so that the children roll up into the parents. When, you, when I say customizations, you can customize even your views in the system. We can say this one here, we actually have a custom view um, with address and it actually pops out, populates your address in here as well. And you can filter, but say that we want to filter anything that has West in the name. Um, oops, forgot to put the percentage sign on my wild card. So we can put the wild card in. Anything that has West in it is gonna pop up. Uh, being able to filter data, uh, being able to uh, create your own custom views, your own custom reports, um, importing and exporting data is really good in Sage Intect as well. You can do it from the screens or they actually have uh, a spot where you can go in and you can pull any of the data that you would want with templates. The entire system is so simple to be able to export, change data, import back into the system. And it gives you the templates and all the explanations of how to use these templates as well. It's every module has templates um, in the system that you're able to uh, use and pull right from here. Um, the last one that we have on here is bank feeds. And one thing that I like to talk about with bank feeds is bank feeds is a way of streamlining and reducing the time that you have to have to reconcile your bank accounts. A lot of clients don't have just one bank account. Most of us have, you know, several bank accounts that we have to go through. And there's end users that are, you know, could be upwards 10, 12 people that are putting information into those uh, banks, the bank on a monthly basis. When we go in on a monthly basis to reconcile our bank accounts, all we need to do is set up bank rules. Uh, let's say that we say if the date, vendor, and the amount match, or the date within a date range, that will automatically check that item to be reconciled when you go in to reconcile. It's huge because at the end of the month, when you go in, the system has done the majority of the work for you. It has all of it there already checked because it matches your criteria that you've set up in the account. So um, with bank feeds, it's uh, just as easy as being able to come in and when you go to 
uh, when you go to reconcile the bank account itself, you're going to have everything checked. You're still able to, let's say that, you know, something got checked and it's a duplicate. You can go in and uncheck. It's not going to automatically reconcile it for you, but it does the majority of the work for you. Um, I kind of went through that really fast, Troy. I'm not sure if you want to um, elaborate on any of the things yeah. or see anything additional that I may not have touched on. No, fantastic. I think, uh, you know, if people want to see a little bit more, we're happy to go in and do a deep dive. Okay. Um, and look at that one-on-one uh, -on -one individually. But we do have a couple questions, so I'm hoping you can answer some of those. Sure. Um, First of all, I kind of answered this. It says, uh, can you review the PO capabilities? The PO capabilities, yes. So we have the ability to be able to customize your workflow, okay? So in purchasing, we have the ability to be able to set up our own transaction definitions. We call it transaction definitions, okay? And we're able to go in and say, is, is it an order? What, what workflow you actually have? you actually can set it up. And as you can see here, we have this one set up as uh, purchase recs. We have the receiver in there, the purchase order, right down to the purchase invoice or the vendor invoice that comes into the system. We set those workflows of what you use. Some people say, I don't use purchase recs. I don't use receivers. I go just straight to the purchase order. You're able to go in and customize that workflow specifically for what you use and able to um, put the purchase orders into the system. Once the purchase order is in the system, you can see that you can either convert to a purchase receiver or a vendor invoice. You're able to tell the system, where do I want, what this workflow looks like, and how do I want it to filter through the system. It also has the ability to be able to post to a uh, user-defined book, okay? User-defined books um, will allow us to pull this information into General Ledger, even if it's not affecting the accrual book. You're still able to see, so you can see how many commitments you still have open, how many commitments, oh, what are the balance on the commitment for the purchase order. You're able to see that with your financial information side by side. Awesome, awesome, thank you. Okay, uh, next question. Uh, I'll, I'll, I think I can take on this one. So it says, does payroll have an app? So in the version that Tina's showing you, we don't have the payroll module in there. Uh, payroll module's been out for about a year, well, I guess not quite a year. Uh, they've been going through testing. It came out of beta about four months ago. It is available now. Uh, we've had quite a few companies that are on it, having success with it. Um, I want to brag a little bit about this. Anything that Sage 300 payroll can do, Sage Intech payroll can do. And I've had some companies come in with some really complicated multi-state, multi-union challenges, the California construction, um, you know, overtime rules, uh, union rules and all of that. And all of those companies have been able to work in um, Sage and tax payroll. So very solid system. For those of you that don't want to have payroll internal and you want to do something outside, uh, it integrates with many, many of the payroll companies, um, so there's no issues there, and we do we do a lot of that too. Um, okay, uh, do you want to add anything to that, Tina? Exactly. It's I mean, like I said, I've worked in Sage 300 and being able to work in Sage Intech, so I have experience in both. Uh, Troy hit the nail on the head when he said that it does everything that Sage 300 can do and more. Absolutely. Um, Tina, you, since you are a former 300 Power user turned Intac user, I'm going to let you answer this one. It says, why okay. would a company convert from 300 to Intact? And what does that process look like? Okay, I can tell you one of my number one reasons that we had decided to um, convert at the company I was at prior to this was the reporting. The reporting and the drill down. As you know, in Sage 300, you're not able to really drill into the information, but as you can see, um, just from our dashboards, everything that, how much it is customizable to what you want to see, and it, the just the flexibility, like I said, of being able to export your information, make your changes, do your thing, import back in. Um, but these dashboards, the dimensions, the multi-entity and the drill downs. Those are the huge piece of 
why we we converted from say 300 and it was just so much it, it's just an easier workflow and being able to dig into where there might be issues uh, i can tell you that's the biggest one awesome awesome and uh, can you talk a little bit, so there's three different report writers in Intact. I'm getting a question about reports. I just want to elaborate yeah. on that. Um, one of the questions is, can you do statistical reports? Uh, but there's also other questions about reports, but I think just a general overview without going in too deep will help answer those questions. Okay, and yes, to answer the question, just easy enough with statistical reports, yes, you can do re uh, statistical reports. Um, we have, like, I, like uh, Troy said, we have several different types of reports. You have your financial graphs that you can create, your financial reports. You have custom reports that are more like your aging and things that are already, it's a custom wizard, almost like a wizard that you go through. And then you have interactive custom reports. Interactive custom reports are able to pull data in, connect databases, kind of like the crystal report that you would have in Sage 300. Um, financial reports are standard reports basically built, but you're able to go in and put your own uh, uh, percentages in, you, your own formulas. You can actually create formulas and you can add statistics to it so that you can see, I don't know, per, production per man hour or how many terms uh, per revenue, you know, revenue per terms and hires. Uh, you can see a lot of that in these reports. I haven't seen any data that we couldn't pull into one of these three types of reports. Awesome, thank you. Um, next question is, um, sorry, just trying to uh, review these. Um, let me, well, I'm gonna answer this in general. So a couple, couple things I wanna talk about. Since Intact is a cloud software, um it has open apis so probably the the best one or one of the best ones i guess we could say is the procore uh integration okay so for any of any of you out there that are procore users great fantastic connection in fact i can tell you it's the best overall connection to procore of any construction software that's in the industry better than 300. the other advantage if you're coming off of three say 300 and you have procore um you do not any longer need the HH2 connector. So whatever the whatever you're paying for that, people are paying anywhere from five to twenty grand a year for that. You can you know put that money back in the budget for something else. So you eliminate that. So very solid connection to Procore, but not just to Procore. Any I can I can mildly say if you have a cloud solution for other other operational softwares. Well, any operational soft, any, let me not operational, any software that's cloud, there's a pretty good chance we can connect it. Okay. We sometimes we might have to build those connections. Most of them, and many of them, there's a Sage Intact Marketplace, and you're welcome to Google that Sage Intact Marketplace. And you'll see all of the different um, companies that already have pre built API integrations. But like I said, even if you don't see your company on there, if it's cloud, it can work. It also does work with some non uh, cloud businesses, HCSS, um, we can connect that to Intact. They're not cloud, but we can connect that. So there's other opportunities uh, for things like that. I know um, if you think about it, operational, the most common ones, you know, the project management softwares and uh, all of them that are cloud, I know it connects to. If they're not cloud, we may have a little bit of work to do, but happy to address that on a one-on-one -on -one situation. And we can go find that out for sure. Um, so yeah, Procore, fantastic connection. Okay, um, let's see. Let's see. All right, uh, Tina, let's see. This question says, we're open to book with our customers and have to give them all the receipts and invoices at the end of a project. Is there a capability to do this without using another program? Let's see, yes. Well, we have the ability to be able to add attachments uh, to any of the fields. So you say the receipts for like AR, um, if you go in and you're doing an invoice for, let's see, I gotta go to an entity level because the invoices are at entity level. But if you go in and you do an invoice at entity level, you're able to attach any receipt that you need to attach to this 
any invoice, any type of attachments that you would have. You have attachments that you can do at the AP level. When you do those attachments, you can, when you invoice this out, you can say, I want it to e email all attachments. It will email the attachments out in whatever format you want, if you want it to be HTML, PDF, however you want that, but you can set that where you can um, email those out to the clients at that time. So this is, has the ability to have attachments at several different areas in Sage Intact. Very good. We can also add on some, uh, we've got some third party AP flow solutions that do a really fantastic job with that. And they actually would house that type of information within their own system. Uh, they connect directly to Intax. So what you do in the one, you do in the other, uh, you know, the information shared, but those systems also would, would give you those same capabilities. Um, okay. Let's see. I have a few other questions, maybe they're probably really a lot deeper dive questions. I invite you guys to, to reach out via email and maybe we can get on and show you that. That's a little bit deeper type uh, questions. And um, thank you for your attendance. Have a good day. Thank you.